Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon out in Arizona. Tony, when am I going to get you out here? To Tony Kornheiser when I'm no longer scared of flying, leaving my basement in Havelinas. Do you remember the last time I was there and there were Havelinas all over the golf course? Like a yeah. 50 of them, 80 of them? But there's not. They travel in packs. They're blind. They don't like people. You know, they're, yeah. they're not going to bother you. They're just not. Well, wait a second. They'll have a if they don't attacks. like people, if they don't like people, then they would bother me. If I was they're walking up 16. They're scared of people. And they're afraid oh, well, of that's people. different. Well, I'm scared of them. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Georgia beats Texas. The Yankees and Dodgers make the World Series and the Liberty take the WNBA crown. But we begin today with some really good NFL wins from yesterday. The Lions went on the road and knocked the Vikings from the ranks of the unbeaten on a last-minute field goal. The Packers beat Houston on a last-second field goal. The Chiefs went to San Francisco, stayed unbeaten by dominating the 49ers. And the Steelers switched to Russell Wilson, had a convincing win over the Jets. Well, on which of these wins most impressed you? The Lions, Tony. In order, I would sort of go Lions, Chiefs, Steelers, because the Steelers were introducing a quarterback that I thought looked rusty early on and played his way yeah. into something very nice for them. And now the Steelers at, you know, 5-2, and two, a very interesting team. Interesting team. But I'm going with Detroit, Tony, because, I mean, just, just the strategic hole left by the absence of Aiden Hutchinson. I, I, I mean, that's enough to overcome. And then the emotional hole. I mean, he's the emotional leader in addition to being the best player on that team, the best defensive player at the very least. And so for Detroit to go into Minnesota uh, unbeaten and do that, I, I just thought, you know, we, you and I talked about this morning on your podcast, I thought that of all the results, that's the one, and that has my attention. I'm going to admit my bias. You know, my bias is, is I-94. With, with those two cities and those two franchises and mostly ignored and, and ignored for all the right reasons over decade after decade after decade, but the Lions are on to something, 5-1 and one for the for the back-to-back -back years, for the first time since yeah. the 1930s. You know, I hate these sentences that start out on SportsCenter. For the first time since, since 2023. It's like, shut up. The first <laughs> time since the 1930s. Come on now. Yeah. I know yeah. you watched a lot of that, and you were impressed with that too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with much of what you said. I just want to start out by saying – that I sat here on Friday and I told you this one thing. I said, I don't bet. But if I did bet, right. I right. would never bet against Mike Tomlin at home as an underdog. And I would That's never right. bet did. against Patrick Mahomes getting points. So I was two for two and I was two for two comfortably. I think that the Lions without Aiden Hutchinson winning that game is very impressive because it is on the road and it's a division game. I think the fact that the Packers held C.J. Stroud to 84 yards Impressive, passing yes. on 21 attempts, I think that's a wow. I, I think what the Steelers them. did, I think when the Steelers saw Russell Wilson in the second half, that is very good foreshadowing for later on in the season. And I would add parenthetically that Amari Cooper had more of an influence with his new team than Devontae Adams mm. had with his new team. But yeah. if I had to pick one, as you know, because we talked about this, I would pick the Chiefs. And I don't want any more hand-wringing about the fact that Patrick Mahomes has two more interceptions, eight, than touchdown passes, six, for two reasons. One, Patrick Mahomes is the best football player on the planet. And two, the Chiefs are still unbeaten. They're the only team that's still unbeaten, right? Champs. And Andy Reid is now 22-4 and four coming out Champs. of a bye. What the, yeah. what the Chiefs did... They went on the road against a good team, a team that was in the Super Bowl last year, San Francisco, not as good now, but they beat them handily. They have already beaten Baltimore, San Francisco, Atlanta, Cincinnati, and one other team I'm blanking on, the Chargers. I think that's the best resume in football right now. I'm, there's no disagreement. I told you this morning, they look like champions. That's what they are. Yeah. It doesn't matter what Patrick Mahomes' individual statistics are. That's nonsense. They use your right. eyes. And they're, they're champions, and they're playing like it, Tony. They make the plays yes. at the points yep. of the game that need to be made. Meanwhile, yep. Yep. the World Series is set. The Dodgers eliminated the Mets in six last night with a 10-5 win in L.A. This followed the Yankees bouncing the Guardians in five on Saturday night. 
Tone, I know how thrilled you are. So what does it say to you that the Dodgers and Yanks are the two teams that have made it through to the World Series again? Yeah, so this is the exact World Series I wanted. I think this is the exact World Series that most true baseball fans wanted. From a historical point of view, they have produced the best World Series and the most World Series, I believe. This is their 12th time together, though the first time in 43 years. And that ties them with the Celtics and the Lakers. And everybody knows how good the Celtics and the Lakers are when they play off in the, in the NBA championship. So I'm really glad to see this. And I don't want to just stick in history here. I'll make it contemporary. They have the two best players in baseball. They have Shohei Otani and Aaron Judge. And we can get to see them maybe for seven games and maybe for like 30 at-bats. And I would think that's a really big draw. I will praise the Dodgers right here. The Mets were a tough out, but the Dodgers scored 46 runs in six games. That's an NLCS record. That's 20 more runs than the Mets. And Shohei Otani, if I'm not mistaken, batted 363 in this series with nine walks. So I don't, so I don't want to hear another thing. Like, I don't want to hear yeah. about Patrick Mahomes and the picks. I don't want to hear that Shohei Otani doesn't get on base when there's nobody on base. I don't want to hear this. Bro, I don't this want to hear that This is all nonsense. So. It's just dumb. Yeah, go ahead. It's you just talk. dumb. You know, I don't have an emotional connection to this. I remember those series. I mean, you talk about the 81 series. Remember all the stars in those series for those two teams. And you got that many stars now. I mean, the, the lineups of the Dodgers and the Yankees are certainly worth watching. You know, no yes. matter what, they're certainly worth watching, Tony. And I, I will say this. You mentioned Otani and Judge and seeing them sort of go against each other. It's not exactly like the Stanley Cup final or the NBA final. It isn't because you're not interacting in the same way physically that you do in those two sports. But, you know, we never got to see. We never got to see LeBron versus Kobe in the finals. Never got to see it. And, you know, there was something that sort of you feel I felt cheated. I'd like to have seen that. We got to see Bird and Magic. We got to see Magic and Jordan one time at least. And so, you know, we're getting to see Otani and Judge, and I think that's cool. That's right. Uh, but it says no, to me basically right. those, lineups are un those lineups are so – This is They're like the 1927 is, Yankees. They're so good. Right. The World Series between these two teams has produced Don Larson's perfect game and Reggie Jackson's – Three home runs in one game. I think that the secret weapon here may actually be Giancarlo Stanton. He's coming out of four mm. home runs in five games against Cleveland, five Chill home Cleveland. runs and 11 RBI in nine playoff games. And he's had tough years in New York. But if he's hot right now and you have Soto and Judge and Stanton, that's a lot of long ball. That's even better, Yankees. I think, it than is. Shohei. <laughs> it's better than Shohei and Mookie Betts and Olympic Freeman. If Freeman can be Freeman. If Freeman's And helped. the Yankees helped. also have, I think, the best starter in Garrett Cole. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sorry it doesn't start for like eight days or something like that. Let's move to the final game of the WNBA season where New York beat Minnesota in overtime last night to win their first championship ever. After the game, Lynx coach Cheryl Reeve hammered the officiating, saying, quote, this bleep was stolen from us, unquote. Reeve referred specifically to a foul call that sent Brianna Stewart to the line with six seconds left in regulation down two. Stewart made both. Wilbon, is Reeve right that the title was stolen from Minnesota? She's certainly right to feel that way. She's right to stand up for her team. She's right to assail a bad call. Let me go a little further. I'm not going to say it was stolen, but I'll defend her right to say it about her team. I watched that game. You know, I watched every second of all these games. And the, the officiating was dreadful. And I'm not into saying that. I'm really not. Let me say it one more time. The officiating from game one through five was dreadful. And New York got the whistle, the benefit of the whistle, overwhelmingly. And this is something that the NBA and the WNBA, it's a flaw it's a serious flaw in that league. You know, I love pro basketball. I love all these playoffs. It's a flaw. It's, 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 it's disgusting if you're not from a big, 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 big city and you look at this. It's like Sacramento years ago getting hosed. And it's, I understand the way Cheryl Reeves feel. Congratulations to the Liberty. They played great. Stewie played great. But they got, they got, the, bend, they got the, the, the short end of the whistle from one through five in that series, and there's no other way around it. Sorry. Okay. 
Full disclosure, the reason you watch every minute of every game is because you have three televisions. For the rest of us who have one television, <laughs> you have to make no, a choice as to where you're going to go on a, on a Sunday evening. All right, so I will say this. I've watched the replay of that foul call five times, and I have seen yeah. a foul five different times. I have seen it be a foul. It no is really foul. something There's for no Cheryl foul. Reeve, a very accomplished coach, to light up the referees like that. I assume she will be fined by the WNBA yeah. commissioner, and I think yeah. she deserves it. I also assume that next year there will be a carryover effect that she will get teed up for breathing, for breathing, because what happens now is like she's accused them of not just of incompetence and maybe of cheating when you use the word stolen. And I would just ask her this. Well, what happened in the overtime? Was something stolen in the overtime? Because you had the same chance of winning in the overtime that the other team did, and you did not. And you won in overtime. overtime. You won in overtime in game one, I believe, right? Game one on that same yeah. court. They, they yeah. Minnesota won in overtime. I would mention one other, one other thing. Um, Ionescu, one for 19. Did you see that line? One I for think 19. It was one that for is 20. John. 119. Well, that is John 19. Stark's territory. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you make yeah. five out of 19, yeah. which is bad, your team wins easily. Yeah. You know, one for 19 is brutal. And she's a shooter. She won game three. She yeah. won but it. She won, she she won that Let's game. Let's take a break. Let me just say this to Cheryl Reeve real quick. Find me then. What are you going to do? you going to throw me off the air? I guess you could throw me off one of your shows. Throw me off the air. Really? You're not going to be accountable? The league can't be accountable. Really? We yeah. can't we'll ask see, that? Let's... You going to blame her? Please. Let's see oh, yeah. if you're back. Let's well, let's see if you're back in the next segment as we take yeah. a break. Throw me because off coming air. up, Have Georgia's win over Texas Please. may have been the highest profile result of the college football weekend, but was it the most consequential? And what does it say that the commander's offense kept rolling even after Jaden Daniels left that game yesterday? Throw me off the air. Let's, let's find throw me. Off. Someone come after yanked. me. Go out to Arizona. Give them the Pardon hook. the interrupt. Look at this. Despite his dare, Wilbon is still on the air. Find him. Let's see what's first. Bill, right go. Going nowhere. Is George's win over Texas the most consequential result of the college football weekend? Maybe, Tony. I mean, George's is certainly the biggest. It's the loudest. It was very impressive to go to Austin. I'm not going to call it a beatdown, but it was just sort of one beat short of beatdown. But I'm going to just say this, Tony. There's some other wins from teams that don't have the luxury of losing two games. BYU, with fun to watch. They're not as good as Georgia. They're more fun than Georgia, and they had to win that game, and they did it. I will say that Georgia beating Texas was right now, today, the most consequential victory. I mean... That, you know, it's a statement win. You go on the road, you beat number one. That's a big deal. Georgia has already played Clemson, Alabama, and Texas. So when it comes to strength of schedule, they're miles ahead of everybody else at playoff time. But, Mike, I think it's possible down the road that we will look back and wonder if the most consequential game wasn't Alabama losing again, and this time at Tennessee. The Tennessee, because maybe. Alabama... After Alabama beat Georgia, they have fallen down a hole. And I'll bet there's a lot of people in the state of Alabama who are wondering, why did we pick this guy after three days? Yeah. Why do we name him? Why yeah. didn't we do a larger search? And, Mike, I'll bet the same thing is being said in Los Angeles about Lincoln Riley. Because his team does not win. It does not close. It's not they new. blew another fourth quarter not lead. Not new. Another fourth quarter yeah. lead to Maryland this time. Yeah. Blew Last lead. one. Okay. Even Paul Feinbaum killed Kalen DeBoer today. Just killed him. What does it tell you that the commander's offense kept rolling after Jaden Daniels got injured? It just confirms how bad Carolina's defense is. Carolina's defense in terms of points allowed, Tony, is not only 32nd and therefore last in the NFL, the next team, the 31st team, Dallas, is like seven and a half points better than Carolina, a full touchdown per game better. And by the way, I, I, I hope, I just hope that, that Jaden Daniels is okay. He's week to week, we're told. Marcus Mariota, who was a number two overall pick himself, he played really well. But I'm not going to jump to conclusions on Carolina's defense. They're next to last. In yards allowed per game. So we know how lousy they are. Yeah. Let's not get crazy and overstate it. Yes, let me, let me affirm this for everybody out there. 
Carolina is horrendously bad. But it also says that Cliff Kingsbury is very good. He may not be a great head coach, but he is a great offensive coordinator. And as you say, Marcus Mariota was in the exact same position that Jaden Daniels was in a few years back, the number two pick when the number one pick was also a quarterback. That was Jameis Winston. Didn't work out very well for either of them, but Mariota played very well in this game. I think it was like 18 for 23, had a couple of touchdown passes, yeah. and led the team to six drives that resulted in scores. Let me say this. My reaction when Jaden Daniels went out is exactly the same as everybody who lives in Washington, D.C. You sit back and you say the following two sentences. Six games. Well, it was nice while it lasted. No, no, don't be that pessimistic. Good. He, no, it's, it's real. Great. It's great that it's he's going to come back. I'm telling you, yeah. you have your worst fear. That's your worst fear. Yeah, oh, sure. That he's sure. going out. That's Glad what I'm saying. Enough email. Glad it's not his leg. Let's take one last break. Still to come, Army and Navy accomplished something they haven't in more than 60 years. Not since 2023, as Wilbon says, in 60 years. Yeah, yeah. And will the Ravens get a tough test from the Buccaneers tonight? It's not a knee. That's all that matters. It's not his knees. His legs are fine. Ribs. Happy time, people. Happy belated 87th birthday from yesterday, Juan Marichal. Ooh. History lesson, kids. Marichal pitched 16 big league seasons for the San Francisco Giants. He was a 10-time All-Star, and twice he led the National League in wins. Marichal's career record was 243 and 142, and his ERA was 2.89. He's in the Hall of Fame. Wilbon, whenever I mention great starting pitchers, like Sandy Koufax and Bob Gibson and Tom Seaver and Jim Palmer and Steve Carlton, you make sure to include Ferguson Jenkins, who you grew up yep. watching. This is yep. how I feel about Marichal. Before the Mets entered baseball in 1962, I was a Giants fan. Marichal was my Ferguson Jenkins. Amen to that, Tony. The leg kick, the wind up. I mean, Juan Marichal, Tony, was so great. And by the way, the list of pitchers that you named, there's nothing like that in baseball. And for the hundredth time this season, and I'll say it as long as we're on the air, baseball is lesser for having no players, no men like that in the game. How can you be greater? How can you be as good when you're missing that many brilliant, brilliant stars? Happy anniversary, Jared Allen, on this day 11 years ago, while being fully engaged by the New York Giants six foot six, 300 pound left tackle, Will Beatty. Allen managed to get his hands around Beatty and onto Eli Manning, clutching the stunned quarterback to the ground. Allen was first team all pro four times. He had 136 career sacks and this one might be his most unique. Eli looked like a helpless calf, which is appropriate because Allen's signature sack dance was the calf rope. Allen led the league in sacks twice, including 22 in 2011. Allen played for four different teams, but was at his best while at the Vikings. There's a Jared Allen sighting out here in Arizona. I wonder if he's living out here, Tony. You won't come out and play with the people out here in the desert because it's too far off I-95. I got to find out where Jared Allen is now. I think he's living on I-95. Happy trails to Sean Watson. An MRI today confirmed that the Browns quarterback ruptured his right Achilles yesterday against the Bengals. Some Browns fans could be heard cheering after Watson's injury, angering teammates like Miles Garrett, who said, quote, we should be ashamed of ourselves as Browns and as fans to boo anyone and their downfall, unquote. Watson's play has been underwhelming this season, and the Browns are one in six. Watson, who has been accused of sexual misconduct by more than two dozen women, has two years and $92 million remaining on his contract. Wow, I'm not going to sit here and boo, but it's such a sorry, sordid, unfortunate episode, and it seems to have no ending, which you can just sort of wrap up easily or neatly, and the Browns seemed to play better yesterday even without him, because I watched the end of that game after he went out. They seem to be better. I wonder if that's sustainable. Let us go to the big finish. Chris Middleton of the Bucks Let's do it. is out for the start of the season as he rehabs from ankle surgeries. What does that mean? You know, I, I want to see Giannis and my friend Doc Rivers, and I want to see the Bucks really get in there and contend. And I worry, Tony, that they won't. I worry about that. Army, Navy, both of them remain unbeaten. I know you think that's significant. It's the latest in the season that they've been unbeaten and, and since 1945, and they're both ranked, and I think that's something that should make people happy. Raiders quarterback Aiden O'Connell broke the thumb on his throwing hand. That's significant, isn't it? 
that team is two and five and he's out four to six weeks, eh, eh, yeah, it is. Ravens, Buccaneers tonight. You intrigued? A little bit just to see if Baker Mayfield can solve that defense, and I suspect he can't. Last one, Chargers Cardinals later tonight. Are you taking your fellow Arizonans? Yeah, I think I'm going to take them, Tony. I think I'm going to take the Cardinals. They have these, these, these wild swings in performance. And Kyler Murray, when he's on, he can beat anybody. So I'm going with him tonight. I don't know. That's not sustainable either. Hasn't proven to be, but I'm going with him tonight. We're out of time. We'll try and do better than the next time. Robert Klein, thanks for watching. Yes, indeed. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, knuckleheads. And now to get you ready for Monday Night Football, here's Scott Van Pelt and the Countdown Crew. Don't we think it's nice that both Robert Klein and Chris Rock watch this show? That's nice. Funny. Real funny guys. <laughs>